Hello, everyone. This is uh, Sir Pencil, the artist, and I'm here right now to. Uh, I'm I'm live right now, and I'm doing this uh, this portrait artwork. Uh, actually, the title of this artwork is uh, Portrait of Jude, because uh, the name of this little boy is Jude, and he is the son of uh, one of the YouTubers. I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, I'm very thankful that uh, he allowed me, uh, you know, to draw his uh, son. But this time, what I'm going to use is a monochromatic uh, color, which is uh, I will base only, you know, one color, like a cool color, like a violet, blue, and some like that, okay? So, uh sit back and relax and uh, later I, I might I might try to uh, you know to sing if I can but for now what I'm doing is this one I have to uh, uh, I have to do something about it I'm very sorry regarding about my microphone because uh, right now my microphone is not working very well and uh, maybe you're wondering it's uh, too loud I cannot do anything so this is the reason why I uh, switched to another uh, microphone okay guys so I'm going to start now using this one I'll put some uh, music so it will my live stream will not be more boring you know? Thank you. 
I'm using right now a colored pencil, okay? And this colored pencil is not ordinary. Um, we call it the Prisma Color. And most of the professional artists or some artists, they used to choose this one. Why? Because uh, it is easy to blend the color compared to the other uh, other colored pencils. I do a live drawing and only late night that I have the time to speak on live because uh, on the daytime on the daytime here uh, my daughter is uh, doing a online stream and I have no place to uh, you know to do some live. Okay, Sean. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Where are you heading now, Sean? Sean, are you there? I can't hear you. Dude. There, you should hear me now. You should hear me now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. How are you doing? All right. Is that Ellie? No, this is not Ellie. This is a child. <laughs> this is Christ, what kind of question is that? Don't mention that. Uh, that <laughs> I don't want to hear that guy, please. Uh, you know what what he was done to me so much. Uh, yeah. hey, um, if you don't hear from me, or uh, if you run into Chiche or Darren, mm -hmm. I sent them both the video. I need their scores. Okay. If you run into Chiche or Darren, say, hey, what's that? The video It's not long. I was like, what, a couple of minutes, if that? I need a score one through ten on each of them. And it'll make the the uh, the stream the stream go smoother. I mean, there'll probably be a few that might show up during the live stream, but after I show the video of all the other girls, there's one hour time limit. Meaning, if nobody shows up within that hour, I'm going to end it, and that's the end of it. But if somebody shows up, does the modeling. We get the score, then the clock starts over. It starts from if there's an hour where there's nobody showing up, I'm going to end it. Not the live stream. I'm just going to end the competition and then make the announcements. And then we can move on to the karaoke and the fellowship and everything. Um, remember, this is a live stream. Why you open up this? People can watch this. Uh huh. Yeah. 
But you should you should have heard heard Buddha in some live streams trying to get girls to do this. Some of her friends. Yeah. And one of them, uh, six bows. Said, "Come on, six bows, you can drop it down like it's hot." <laughs> it was funny what Buddha was saying. Yeah. Buddha is really funny. <laughs> Where, so where are you going now? Uh, I'm backed into a door getting unloaded right now as we speak. I'm in Oshkosh, wow. Wisconsin. This is, this is where the old famous 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s children clothing was made. Right here, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I know. Even in the Philippines, you have like that, but it's too expensive. I'm telling you. Well, it's because it's imported. Yeah. Anyway, it was made right here. They still make it. It's just not as big as it used to. Justice kind of like took over. But now Justice is starting to die out. They're starting to close some of the stores because of economic crisis is getting bad. Who owns, Who owns Justice? I'm not sure. But Oshkosh was, you know, I wore Oshkosh clothing when I was a kid. God. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it was Oshkosh that made the suspenders identical to the ones that Robin Williams wore in the TV show Mork My and Mindy. Glenn. Yeah, because I had those. I wore them uh, throughout kindergarten. I because I emulated him. Yeah. John, Formula yeah. Glenn is a record, uh, one of uh, you know well-known uh, recording artists in the Philippines. But right now he's working in uh, in UK as a nurse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I still have those suspenders, and I put oh, them on really? my son. Yeah, I put them on my son when he was little. I still have them. them. I bet you those things are worth a fortune, because you can't just go and find these suspenders anymore. Yeah. They were identical to what Robin Williams, what Robin Williams wore in the TV show Mork and Mindy. I don't know if any of you has ever watched that TV show. But if you, yeah, but if you Google Mork from Ork and look at you know, click on images, you'll see a picture of him and he's wearing those suspenders. They're rainbow colored with a moon and a cloud on it. I'm excited. So, what what time is your bikini contest uh, will begin? Um, nine p.m. Philippine time. Yeah. It's at going to be at night for you guys during the day for us. Guys, see if you want to join in a bikini contest, it's still open. You need to. Uh, uh, are you still open for another contestant? Not not for the video. They have to just show up for the live stream and be ready to go. I'll bring them up to the panel. Okay. They'll have 30 seconds to, you know, walk around or whatever that models do. And the judges will be watching and you send me your scores. Yeah. Uh, it's just, what, you can't send in any more videos is what it is. You have to be there. You have to attend the live stream to compete now. So, uh, how much is the price? Uh, 200 peso, 100 peso, and 75 peso. Or dollars, I should say. No, that's <laughs> dollars, guys. That's yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah I like that. Everybody. Like, peso, that's bigger, you know. 200 peso? It ain't nothing. <laughs> no, no, that's in dollars. I don't know what the peso equivalent is. There are some uh, girls love that, you know, love, love to show off. And then, uh, yeah, you, you can still have the price. You know? Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to finish this artwork because, first of all, this is 
submission. And I promised to the owner that uh, I will do my best to finish this one. Because uh, lately, I was I feel uh, busy. That's why I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I've been uh, staying in my bed. But like I said, I don't see a whole lot of people showing up to my live stream. Now, if I had it on Darren's live stream, yeah, there'd probably a whole hell of a lot more people. Yeah. But Boots and Sammy wanted to had wanted me to host it and sponsor it. It was their idea, not mine. That's why, you know, the rumors get started that I'm a pervert. And I'm like, uh, they came to me. I didn't ask for this. I know better. I would never have asked anybody to do a bikini competition. Because, yeah. yeah, the Panays are going to think that you're a pervert until you know. They come to me. <laughs> How can you be pervert if you just uh, being nice to the Filipinos? You know, uh, you're supporting Filipinos, like uh, giving um, a price like that. And no it, one it, from the live stream can do that, you know? Yeah, but the, a lot of the Westerners are the, oh, he's a simp, he's a pervert. You know? No, I'm not a simp, I'm not yeah. a pervert. Ignore those people because these people, they, uh, they, they they cannot afford, you know, to have that kind of contest. All, well, uh, all they know is to, you know. They can't do what I can do. Yeah. All, all they know is to make uh, false promises and then, uh, yeah. Making uh making a sweet talk to Filipinos and then after they get anything they will uh, run they will running like a uh, like a mouse hiding in there you know mm -hmm. then whatever don't uh, don't uh, take uh, you know uh, don't listen to these kind of people and, uh, you know what uh, you really help a lot of Filipinos. And you are a very good guy. And I fear for everybody because the economy worldwide is going to get bad for everybody. Yeah. Not just this country or that country. It's going to get bad for everybody. Like, like I asked Jerry Boy, because I'm worried. I'm like, Jerry Boy, uh, there's some people going to be freezing this winter. Because I know how cold it can get in Scotland. Yeah. And yeah, th he said yes. My assumption was true. A lot of them in the UK and Northern Europe, they're going to freeze it. Some people are going to freeze to death. And whose fault is that? The United States, my country. Wow. I don't hate my country because of the embargo, uh, the, uh, not embargo, it's that word I'm looking for. The sanctions we put on Russia and telling Europe, do not take their oil, buy our oil. Yeah, our uh, three major oil companies in the United States are going to sell it to, you know, our oil to Europe for twice twice the, uh, the price. It's going to cost those people more, and a lot of people are going to get put out because they can't afford it. And it's like America is doing this. The three major American oil companies are doing this by the use of our government to sanction Russia to stop the oil from going out. It's like, look, you did, the, you know, sanctions do not affect governments. They affect people like you and I. You know, honestly, and they you know, never work. You know, honestly speaking, the one who makes the things complicated is the president, the Putin. I'm sorry, I couldn't Everything. hear you clearly. I mean, uh, the one who was trying to mess up this kind of situation is... Uh, you know, Putin. No, it wasn't Putin. Okay. We, uh, uh, our oil companies wanted this so they can make more profit. Mm -hmm. That's all this is okay. about. It's about profits. It's not about this person or that person. Yeah, but at the same time, we're going to go back to the old Cold War ideas that Russia is a bunch of evil people, in which a lot of people don't know nothing about it unless they've been over there. And I have been to Russia. They're not evil people. They're just like you or I. They just speak a different language. Yeah, it is. They, they're nice people, honestly. Yes. Like, compared to Filipinos. And then uh, they're easy to talk to compared to other, 
European countries, you know. Uh, the people here is not arrogant in Russia. Yeah. When you go back to World War II and you look at Ukraine, there were two different types of Ukrainians. There were the Chetniks, which supported Germany in the war, mm -hmm. and then there was the Partisans that supported Russia. The country was split in half. Well, the ones that were the par the ancestry of the Partisans were in the eastern Donbass area. Okay. And the other Ukrainians didn't like them. It, there's been hatred ever since. And that's why uh, certain units in the Ukrainian army were systematically just murdering people by chucking over a few bombs, blowing these people up. And yes, a lot of children would die too. But because you don't hear it on the news doesn't mean it didn't happen. That's what started all this. And Putin has been trying to tell everybody, you need to do something about this or I will. And he's had enough. This has been going on since 2014, even before that. It was, it was our government that overthrew the duly elected uh, president and government of Ukraine and, and, and put in this guy that they have now, who was, used to be a comedian. But see, because you don't hear it on the news does not mean it didn't happen. When you get the true and the whole story, instead of listening to network propaganda, you're like, okay, I know what this is all about. John, wait, I'll just uh, get some uh, drinks. Because um, I feel sleepy and I, I wanted to wake up myself. Hold on. All right, do we have any here in the chat? Anybody? Uh, I don't know if we have anybody in the chat. I don't see anything. Oh, well. So how's everybody doing? Everybody's either at work or going to sleep. That's all I know. Going to work or, or, or in, uh, sleep. Oh, Leonard. Hey, you Leonard. You ought to click on the link. Come up to the panel. Forget about typing. Oh, Let's see hello, Leonard. Yes, Leonard I told him to come up. How are you doing? I told him to come up to the panel. Yeah. Can you come up in the panel, Leonard? I already uh, dropped the link there. If he can. If he is busy. But, see, when I do analysis like that, people listen to it and they, they know that they're hearing the truth. They just can't accept it. And it's like, look, it's not you. It's not me. It's our government and, and our boards of directors of the three major oil companies that made that decision for us. Yeah. And we claim to be, you know, a, a, a country of freedom. If decisions are made for you and you have no influence, that's a dictatorship. That's not freedom. Yeah. And those decisions were made for us. We didn't vote on it. But uh, I don't know what uh, what will be the. That tells you our priorities. We got people on mass numbers the past year losing their house, being thrown out, can't can't get work. Oh, they can if they're lucky, but it ain't going to pay them enough to make a living. They're still going to be living in abject poverty and homeless. But. Oh. They're, uh, they're, they're, Instead of putting all these people to work and you know putting people in homes, we're going to send billions of dollars to a foreign country. That's a good idea. Yeah. Leonard is here. Oh, Leonard. 
Hey, how are you? But I got some of them on the internet. Oh, you hate America. I, said, I didn't say anything about hating America. I'm just critical. It's just you're not going to pull the wool over my eyes. I'm too smarter. I'm smarter than you are to figure that out. Yeah, they just don't want to don't want to hear the truth. And how I come up with that conclusion by hearing figuring out the facts is my Marxism. What I learned from Karl Marx, do the analysis, look at everything, and you look at the grand scheme of things and understand it, you'll come up with a conclusion just like he would have. Yep. Wow. We're talking That's politics here. <laughs> no, it's a, no, it's not politics. It's economics. Yeah. Everybody I everybody gets it mixed up. Yeah, I know uh, I know you you got graded the uh, economics or something, but I'm very happy that you're sharing that kind of stuff, you know. Yes. Because when it comes to the political, especially here in the states, I can't stand any of them. That's for sure. They're all a bunch of pigs in my book. Oh yeah, they gotta be liars and, and corrupted to get elected. The only one that I find palatable is Bernie Sanders, because he actually listens. Yeah. And and does the analysis, even as weird as he is. And one that I would like to have ran for president, but won't for some reason. And they loved him in Minnesota. And that was former Governor Jesse Ventura, the body. Yeah. yeah. Even though he didn't beat Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesse Ventura. How is he now? Oh, he's doing great. Jesse Ventura is a great guy. I just wish he would have ran for president. If he ran for president, he would be independent. He doesn't like either party either. But but before he is in WWE, right? Well, when it was called WWF. Yeah. Uh, WWF, yeah. Yeah, he was the the first time they ever put a heel on the, behind the mic because mm -hmm. he couldn't wrestle anymore. So McMahon uh, yeah. came to him. I got an idea. There's no never been a heel on the mic to go for the bad guys. So they brought him in, and Ventura was the best at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my era when I watched it in the 80s and part of the 90s that was my favorite era I mean the wrestler that got away with the most shit was Roddy Roddy Piper yes he did uh, yeah. he got away with the most crap I, mean, I remember never forget on Piper's pit he broke the coconuts over Jimmy Snooka's head and he, 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 he did an interview about that he goes whoever it was that brought him was supposed to file the coconuts down where they would break easily well, they didn't do that, <laughs> but he goes, but Snooka had a hard head, thank God, and they broke, and but it left a big bruise on his head, and, you know, yeah, Roddy yeah. Piper felt bad about that. <coughs> I still remember that, uh, that day, you know, I, I do, I do love uh, wrestling, too. But the era of Macho Man and Jake the Snake Roberts and Andre the Giant and, you know, all them others from the 80s and 90s, that was my favorite era of wrestling. My favorite tag team was the Hart Foundation, Jim the Anvil and Brett the Hitman. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been, it isn't worth watching anymore. It is, for the girls, the women's oh, division yeah. is because they have charisma. They got character. These other guys, they have no character, not like the 80s, because no, it's all scripted. It's, it's too obviously choreographed, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's scripted. Everything back in the day was ad lib. They just winged it, and they were great at it. You know, like, yeah. you know, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> Dusty Rhodes was voted the greatest talker, though. Yeah. Him and and uh, uh, Ric Flair, you know, they had character where they didn't actually have to wrestle. <laughs> like Rick, Ric Flair, he could draw thousands of people in a crowd, and all he's got to do is walk out and go, "Woo!" Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, all he's got to do. I, yeah, I really like most in WWF is uh, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. <laughs> Yeah, he died tragically though. But Rick, uh, Rick Rude, oh yeah, he was great. 
I like that when I went and seen him live in Columbus, Ohio. I think it was like back in 1987. My brother was 18 and going to college, and he picked me up, and we went to Columbus to watch it. And Rick Rude was wrestling. Uh, I can't remember who he was wrestling, but the crowd was all talking trash to him and everything. And Rick Rude goes, I'd like y'all to keep the um, the noise down while I take my robe off. And then he stops, right? And then there's this huge dude standing up, pointing and yelling at him. And he walks up to the ropes and points at him and said, sit down, fat boy. <laughs> 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 that was hilarious. Uh, but see, they had character back then. They don't have it to the, in this day and age. Yep. I, I think he died because of a heart attack, and I'm sure because of the steroid. Yeah, a lot of them paid for it because of the steroid usage. Like right now, Lex Luger is in bad shape. The one that had the best physique without steroids, his was all natural. He he, he had to eat a lot of protein to get like that, was the British bull, Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. He had a great physique, and it was all natural, no steroids. But he worked his butt off, though. Yeah, he had to. Where is he now? Uh, Davy Boy passed away. Uh he had a drug problem. He had cocaine issues. Oh my god! Yeah, most of most of these uh, people they're involved in drugs. I don't know what. Hello, half wit. What uh, what uh, what what can you get from? Hey, half wit. Yeah. yeah. The funny thing is, Davy Boy Smith was a, a, a arch rival of the Hart Foundation, but and yet, Davy Boy Smith is the brother-in-law of uh, Bret Hart. He was married to Diane Hart. A lot of them were related. A lot of people just didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the Anvil married uh, one of the other uh, sisters of Bret Hart. That's why Natalia Hart is Jim the Anvil's daughter. Oh, she's great. And she reminds me a lot of her, da her dad, too. She's a great wrestler, just like her uncle Bret. She's one of my favorites. Her and uh, Kano Kanako To Yuri. Other known as Asuka. She's going to go back to her older character, Kana, which is her real name, and she wants to be a heel. <laughs> I still liked her anyway. It didn't matter what, if she was the heel or the baby face, it didn't matter to me. Yeah. When I first saw her in Japan, she, uh, I don't know if she was a baby face or a heel, but she was wrestling that one girl. When she ran by me, it was like an unseen force smacked me in the face. And I was like, what is it about this woman? And it wasn't until a, a couple years later I found out she ended up in the WWE. She was res wrestling in uh, women's professional wrestling in Nasuka, uh, Osaka, Japan. Right. You know, because to me, Japanese ladies especially, they look fragile, very fragile to me. But these girls were beating the snot out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Because Barry, he did. He knew wrestling was fake, but when he heard that pop from Asuka kneeing that girl in the face, he was like, "Oh, mate, that had to hurt." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, "I felt it too, Barry." It's called a shining wizard. They bounce off the ropes, come over there, and they knee the girl in the face. It's like, "Ooh." <laughs> I, I just become live because uh, I, I feel uh, I feel sleepy, so I decided to become live so I, I can talk to you guys while I'm doing this. Yeah. She, originally, I thought he was taking me to go see sumo wrestling, not, you know, entertainment wrestling. And I'm like, these girls are going to kill each other. I was waiting for the porcelain glass to shatter all over the ring. I was like, <laughs> man, these girls are beating the snot out of each other. I couldn't believe it. Because they look fragile to me. They do. Yeah, they do. So, John, are you, just, are you are starting to like them? I've always loved Asian women. Yeah. Even when I was a kid. It's just they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
there's so much uh, Asian women to like. You have a good personality. How are you now, Rob? Uh, Leonard. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, I need to uh, finish this because uh, someone yeah. owns this already. For the oh, Leonard and Halfwit, are you going to yes. join in on, on my live stream day after tomorrow morning? I'm going to try. Uh, to. That's the bikini contest. Yeah, How? what time is it? Um, are you in Eastern time zone? Central. You're central? Okay, let me see here. That'd be one, two, nine, seven o'clock in the morning, your time. Okay, I should be able to do that if I just remember it. Yeah, see, it's in the morning, our time, at night in the Philippines. Right. I'm excited who will be the grand winner. Yeah, yeah. A 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, 9 p.m. Philippine time, and I don't know. Is Australia on the same time zone as the Philippines? No, I think they're different, but I'm not sure. Half wet. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be. It's 9 p.m. the Philippine time, and he's you'll from, have to do uh, He's not from Australia. He's from New Zealand. Half wet. Oh, right. so he's in uh, New Zealand. I think that's earlier time zone then. Um, I, hell, I wouldn't know how to do that one. Yeah. But he might know. <laughs> Some tells me he's in a time zone before the Philippines, I think. It might be. Just become live because I'm just making some friends here. And yeah, I think uh, when the international dateline is right there, and I think New Zealand is like the last people to go on uh, to go on to the next day. You know, yeah, it might be <laughs> where the international dateline is. Yeah, like after the new year, they're the last ones to celebrate it. <laughs> I think I'll I'll sing one song for you guys. So cool. I, I can be awake because uh, honestly speaking, I I, I feel sleepy. Uh, I don't know. It's because of uh, maybe uh, I have some problem. You know. I'll yeah, I gotta tell you. After after this year's New Year's, it'd be twenty twenty three. None of us will be alive when this happens, but in 172 years, we'll enter in a new age. In 2150, it will be entering in the age of uh, Aquarius. We are in the age of Pisces ah. right now. Oh. So uh, I'll sing a one song for you guys just to uh, wake you up. Yes, and, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for my uh, my life seems quite boring, but it, it will not be boring if I'm going to sing for you guys. Oh, I like watching you draw. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Uh, I'll sing uh, one song for you guys, something like uh, oldies. <laughs> Sorry, uh, maybe make it uh, Christmas because uh, soon it will be Christmas. Still looking for it. Okay. Yes. Okay. There you go.
Christmas tell a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. Next year all our troubles will be miles away. Once again, as in olden days, happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us, will be near to us once more. Someday soon we will be together. If the fates allow, until then we'll have to mulder through somehow. So have you. Yourself. A merry little Christmas. Now. Okay. Okay. Um, there you go. Yeah, sorry guys. I tried to sing a Christmas song here. Oh, sorry, yeah. That's my I'm very sorry if I'm muted because uh, my brother is having a sleep apnea attack. And normally, if he has an attack, he used to shout like that. Leonard, are you there? Yes, yeah, so I muted when you were singing, so I didn't get any background noise getting in there. And I forgot yeah. to unmute. Yeah, do you like it? <laughs> yes, you did really good. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was just uh, trying to, you know, to wake up myself. Yeah. Yeah, this is a blue, uh, a blue image. This is not yet finished. So, uh, so what is your plan for today? Where are you going, Leonard? Ooh. Oh, I'm just going to stay home. You're going to stay home? Yeah, and no, I don't have any rides anywhere, so. Yeah. No plans. The reason, yeah, the reason why I become live, it's because uh, I just want to, you know, to create the content. Yeah. And to show also what I'm doing. And uh, I guess that uh, the owner of this uh, painting or this portrait is also uh, watching, but uh, he's from Australia. Oh, okay. It's uh, Australia. I don't know if uh, he's still uh, awake. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. But Leonard, I don't know if you were in here when I said it. I I asked, is that is that uh, Ellie? <laughs> <laughs> Not no, Ellie. Wasn't. Not Ellie. <laughs> Come on. I I don't wanna I don't wanna it does it look like Ellie? This is a child. <laughs> it's a child, my goodness. Well, you know Sean's a joker, so Yeah, I know. I know Sean. Sean Moore. <laughs> Sean talking with BS. <laughs> yeah. Why is it BS? What is the purpose why you put a BS word? Here, I'll show you. It is my road name abbreviated. See, it's on my door. Ah, yeah. <laughs> the BS. <laughs> Big people sexy. Think, yeah, people will think uh, it's BS something like a bad word, you know? That's well, nasty. yeah. That's why I left it that way. Yeah. <laughs> God, John. Makes it interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's something interesting. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, it's all right. So, uh, I know uh, my live stream is kind of boring, but after this, I'm going to sing another song, which is Christmas song. Yeah, but I'll be down. Though. I'll be down. I'll be shut down the whole day. I can't pick this up until 3 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Oh, and it, wow. I'll be going to Lewiston, Maine. Okay? I've only been there one time, and I think I took Des up there. I didn't take Sammy or Darren up to Maine. I'll be going all the way to Lewiston, Maine. Okay. I'd rather have gone back down to Florida if I had a choice. Yeah, you're going to get in snow probably. That's never fun. <laughs> a lot of mosquitoes again in my area. Jesus. You know, uh, I will tell you something. I have a friend of mine. Uh, he is uh, Italian, uh, Polish. He went to Africa. You know what happened to him? He got malaria. Well, and... You got to watch that there. Yeah, yeah. What happened? He's in Kenya right now. And uh, I asked the mother, because the mother is posting on Facebook, uh, Get Well Soon, Michele. And I asked the mother, her name is uh, Iwa. Oh, where's Sean now? Sean is dropped down. It's all right. What happened? I asked, I, I asked, uh, I asked her, what happened to your son? My son got an uh, malaria. And how is he now? And I, I seen in the picture that my God, he has an eye bugs now. Just like yeah, um, them malaria tears you up. Yeah, I know. I think this is much worse than uh, than dengue, right? I uh, I don't know if it's any worse than dengue, but it's it's really prevalent in Africa. My ex wife was from mm -hmm. Kenya. Ah. So your son is mixed? Yeah, my son is mixed, but he was from a previous relationship, not my ex-wife. Ah. But his, mother, his mother's black also. You know, I honestly speaking, this is I will be straightforward to you. Mixed American and mixed white, um, white with black, they are really sexy for me. I'm telling you now. <laughs> It, no, really? no, 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 it, no. It's not all about that. Uh, no, they, no, I understand what a, you're saying. Yeah. There's no, a look. It, there's a look about that. The, yeah. the way they look. They look like a Puerto Rican, you know? He's See? he's he's mistaken for Puerto Rican a lot. Oh. Because <laughs> he's, light, he's light enough, complected, and has my nose. So he doesn't show the African-American as much. Other ah. than his hair. So he, he looks like Middle Eastern, like uh, 
Well, yeah, he could pass for that probably. Yeah, like a turkey because the uh, turkeys they they look like mixed black, but uh, yeah, you know, it's very possible. Like he could, yeah. yeah, he could pass for that. But like, like you know, like I say, he he's uh, thought to be Puerto Rican a lot, yeah, or even Italian. Oh, Italian, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, Italian they look like. Yeah. What can you say about my drawing uh, since uh, you're here? It's looking good. Yeah. Um. Actually, um, I'm going to color it in the right color, but since I'm running out of flesh. <laughs> I try to make it different, like yeah. a monochromatic. It will be nice if it is monochromatic because this is uh, another uh, another type of uh, you know right. uh, color, right? Right. And I'm very happy that you went to my panel because uh, yeah, I need someone to talk to also. You know. <laughs> well, sure, anytime. What happened yeah. to Sean? Um, his signal. No. Oh, yeah, either that or you might want to get to get something to eat. Yeah. Yeah, let, let, him, let him do whatever he wants, you know. Oh, yeah. He's my good friend of mine, you know. He's becoming a good friend of mine. Yeah. I he, haven't known he, him really long, but he's becoming a good friend. It's, yeah, and Sean is a really intelligent guy. He is. The, 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 the I love, I love him when he starts talking about economics. Yeah. <clears throat> there are some YouTubers they cannot do that, you know, talk about something else, you know. <clears throat> but Sean yeah. can uh, make a copy and that's he that's can talk what about I really just like anything. Huh? He can talk about just about anything. Yeah. And he has a uh, respect also from a woman. That that's what I really like he, from him. Yeah, he is a very respectful person. And there are some people they mistaken about the son. They think that he is a pervert. No, actually, it's not like that. <clears throat> you know, um, no, he has a big concern to the Filipinas. Yes, he does. And Sean's a good guy. Honestly speaking, there are some foreigners. You know, uh, they they judge Filipina like that, but he's not. The, he's not a judgmental guy. No. And he's been there a few times, so he knows. He knows the truth. I have a question. When when I'm singing, my voice is so loud, or much better if I use this, this one, with the echo or without an echo? It would depend on the song my, uh, to me. But okay. you're, you're not too loud. You're just okay. about the right tone. What? You're just about the right volume, in my opinion. But then again, what do I know? I'm not a singer, so. Uh, the volume is not so loud. Is that what you mean? It's not over loud. No, it's just about right. Okay, thank you. What, yeah, no, what, because... I hate, what I hate is people have the volume so loud you can't even hear what they're saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not, you know, that's not enjoyable. Yeah. Are you excited now in uh, living here in the Philippines? Yes, I am so far. I'll have to I'll have to get there and try it out before I before I get less excited. But I yeah. don't think I will. I think I'll be fine. You just uh, you know uh, what I advise to you just follow it. Okay, uh, I'm Absolutely. not going to mention anything because yeah, yeah. All... No, I appreciate what you said. And I will definitely keep it all in mind mm -hmm. because, because uh, it was uh, wonderful information. Yeah. I don't want you. Oh, who is this? I think this is Sean also. He just dropped. Uh, I knew it. He is. Yeah. Yeah. I had. I, I had. My, hello. I had to make a phone call to dispatch really fast. Mm -hmm. Well, we figured it wasn't anything real serious. Hey, Sean, well, I'm I have letting something him know. to tell you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Leonard Lund is uh, transferring to the Philippines. I think you have to give him advice. Have you ever been before? No, I have not. Oh, you, you'll love it. But I, I think. But 
But the I, only thing, know, I gotta be careful and pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah, the only reason why I couldn't do it is because I got four kids. Yeah, and you got a very young young daughter, so I yeah. understand that. My only son's twenty eight, got his own apartment, living with his girlfriend. So he don't need me anymore. Yeah. Now yes, your money's gonna go a lot farther in the Philippines to a point. Depending on what the economy does, and you well, know, your way is still going to go farther. Yeah, your your financial situation. Okay, yeah. on the economical side, I got to warn you about this. It it could be gold. It all it could turn and kill you. Um, now, the, you hear in America, they can't do this. They can't do that. Yes, they can. Um, what is uh, what company did you do you uh, draw a pension from? I uh, just got Social Security. I don't have any pension. No pension? Oh, that's no. not good. I worked as a contractor, and I didn't have sense enough to do my own uh, uh, IRA or anything like that. Yeah. They've and been trying. You know, that's what it is. I'm just, just what didn't have enough sense to do it. Yeah. They've been trying to kill Social Security since the 19... 19- 30s when Roosevelt created it yeah. not uh, not us but the rich it was yeah. the rich that paid for it back in the day by taxing them 90 92% over yeah. a certain amount that's how it originally was paid for then it was dumped onto all of uh, us <laughs> right so they could right. get a tax cut uh, and then, then in the 50s Eisenhower changed the law so they could just take money out of there and uh, they've never paid it back Roosevelt didn't do that. Roosevelt died in forty-five. I'm not Roosevelt. I'm sorry, Eisenhower. Oh, Eisenhower. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Um, but yeah, Eisenhower did that. But and, see, they, uh, yeah, Roosevelt's the one who started it. Yeah, the after World, when Roosevelt passed away, they realized it wasn't him. It was the movement from below that did it. Yeah. And so they destroyed that movement. And they've been destroying and dismantling that New Deal from 1933, Roosevelt. Yep. yep. That's what that's what built the middle class in this country was that New Deal. Exactly. Well, well, they destroyed it, and they've been trying to destroy Social Security for God knows how long. But you're okay as long as Social Security is still in place, which yeah, as long you probably as shouldn't. Have. But I've been telling uh, everybody that also draws a pension. I said, if the economy crashes and your pension was tied to what crashed, you ain't going to yeah. get one. Yeah, you're BS out. I mean, you got your SSI, but y- your pension is gone. Well, SSI is actually, it's managed by Social Security, but it's not, not quite the same thing. It has its own trust fund. Because, you know, that's why a lot of retirees had to go back into the workforce because right. they, lo- they lost their pensions. That and the fact that inflation and everything hit them so bad. And they might mm-hmm. not have as much. I mean, I you know, everybody has a different amount on Social Security. So it's based on how much you earn. Now, I don't get the most. So, you know, I'm about middle of the road probably. That's why my generation, we always know we were going to get screwed. We always know we're not going to be able to retire. We have a better chance of going out on disability than being retired. Yeah. <laughs> but see, the disability you want to go out on is SSDI. and Because that pays way more than SSI. Uh-huh. I, I found all that out because I had to do it. And because I went on SSDI... Unfortunately, it was only for a couple of months before I reached my full retirement age. And then they roll that over to Social Security, but they keep the higher amount. But hey, look, if, if you stay thrifty, don't splurge and always leave yourself an out where you can come back here. Exactly. You're, you're okay. That's what I told Robert. Leave yourself an out where you got enough money to make it back home because – Old dog, new tricks showed what happened to somebody who retired early and thought he had enough money to make it to retirement age yeah, and about, uh, burned through that money very quickly. 
Well, yeah, he did. He burned through that money because he was dumb. And I mean, anybody could make that mistake, but you know, he's building houses for the family and. Well, you being a senior re retirement age, I, I trust you're a thrifty type of person. <laughs> and I that's why, so. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like Paul, Old Dog, New Tricks, and a lot of others are thrifty. Yes, they're a bit wealthy, but they're thrifty, and they don't have to worry about coming back home. Yeah. Well, now, Paul only has Social Security also. But he's got really? a YouTube channel. Yeah. He's got his I YouTube thought, channel. And I thought he had a good pension. More, I think. I just assumed it. I thought he was like an executive that lives on a good retirement. <laughs> no, well, if what he says on his channel is true, got no reason to disbelieve it. Uh, in fact, I heard him talking about it yesterday or day before. Uh, yeah, he's got a hell of a wife, and oh, yeah. I, I watch and I hear all these these young Western dudes from Australia and all that talk trash and or ask him, you know, why would a girl like her want to be with a guy like that? They don't understand. It's different in the Philippines. It's not like the exactly. Western culture. You know, I got, have a dude having six back abs and looking like you know Fabio and shit like that. They don't the, even want the, those guys. Panays do not care. Okay, most of it them, even most the of them don't even like those guys. Yeah, because they're stuck up. But well, that too. And and and, 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 and they have that attitude. Yep. And Panays go <laughs> by who you are as a person, yeah. not what necessarily what you look like. Because for the most part, we all we all look wapo anyway to him. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you, Sean. And the only reason why they say that is because I got green eyes. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, if I'm I didn't have these green up. eyes and have brown eyes. Up. Yeah, I'm going to foul them up because I got hazel eyes. Well, I do too. My, mine will turn blue and green. Yeah, and I've got blue in them and stuff. And Guys, guys. For the Filipinos, and this is the first time they saw a white Caucasian guys like you. For them, no matter how you look like, uh, unless you're white, you, you're still guapo in their eyes. That means guapo <laughs> means handsome. <laughs> um, yeah, but see, if if they didn't, my I had brown brown eye color. I'd look like fat Flabio to them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just hoping I get to where I can walk without a, a walker before February. For for how long you will uh, wear that uh, uh, that uh, wheelchair? I'm worried about you. Well, what did I, you have done? I had a stroke. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Like, I I thought you were on Sammy's channel when I came out about it, to Robert. <laughs> but uh, no, I missed it. Yeah. You know, well, I know you're not always on there the same time I am. But, when you yeah. go to the Philippines, you won't. You probably will not have another stroke because the stress just bleeds away. There's no rush for anything except for going to the toilet. That's different. You don't have a rush. You don't have a rush to do anything, and the yeah. stress just bleeds away. And it's like, oh, this is so relaxing. The stress just, oh. Yeah. It, just re you're finally yes. having a relief. The problem is the Filipina that uh, he he's going to be with. That's the, the that's the only one. But I yeah. hope uh, you you know better that Filipina that you're going to meet in Cebu because he's uh, but, living in Cebu. Yeah, but just yeah. being here in America, you know, you could just you could just feel the stress. It's so tangible, and we're all under pressure and stress all the time. Yeah, I'm looking for that relief. And the the Filipina that I'm going to meet, she knows my situation. I told her, actually, I'd been talking to her online for probably six months or so before I had the stroke. And then I was radio silent for about two and a half months before I could actually get online again. Oh and wow! She she basically waited for me. At least how old is she? Tell. How old she's, is she? She's thirty-two. Oh my Good god! Age. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then um uh, my advice to you, Leonard, okay. Uh try to try to know her better. Okay. Oh, of course, of course. Please. I'm, uh I don't because know. I don't want in the end you are in Rapid Tulfo and complaining <laughs> about a Filipina and I and yeah. I will be surprised. I said, Oh my god, I know that guy. He's from a Rafi two four. Yeah, me. I, lot, I just want to meet him. Yeah, a lot yeah. of. Uh, well, he's a you senator, know, Americans. So he's probably not that easy to meet, but. Yeah. A lot of Americans, they they used to uh, go to uh, Rafi Tulfo if they cannot reach the Filipina anymore. Yeah, I've seen a couple of his shows. Uh, one of the other channels I watch. Um, Get an autograph photo. Yeah. Get an autograph picture with him. That's what I'd like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh yeah, he's uh he's got a good show. But uh I don't want to be on there, no. <laughs> That's why my target for the perfect finet is it gotta be at least thirty years or older. Yeah. Yes. I hippie dippy eighty nine. I mean, the girls in their 20s, some of them are great, but that that's just, a, you know, it could go bad. Yep. I've had I've had some 20, 22-year-olds message me and talk to me, and I talked to them for a little while, and it didn't take very long at all for me to drop them. Come on, not, not the 22-year-old. They're just playing. Yeah. And you can you can tell after a few you know after a few days of talking to them, either that or they start asking for money right off. Hey, uh, here, yeah. baby what? May. I heard baby May is like in her forties, but she doesn't look it. She's thirty-seven. Oh, she's thirty, but she looks like a like a twelve, thirteen-year-old girl. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Ba I don't know her. Old, old dog's wife. Well, they're actually not. I, I don't yet. know her. I don't know her. I, I don't know even a uh, old dog on. Oh, they're not married? I thought they were. No. No, they were he's trying to get her to the he's trying to get her to the States on a uh, fiance visa. And because that's easier than a, on a than a marriage marriage visa. Uh -huh. I thought he was gonna stay in the Philippines. Well, I he thought does. he wanted to stay there. No no no, he, he does. But he wants to take get her over there and probably get her a social security card. So she can actually draw his uh, survival. She have, yeah, she'll, uh, she'll have dual citizenship if he marries her. Right. And oh, me, I'm, I, I want to meet meet Paul oh, when I, I go over there. Definitely. That's one of the first places I'm going. Hello, Hippie DP89. How are you doing? Hey, awesome. Hippie. What's up, man? Not much so far. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's one of the first places I'm going is to McGee. Uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna, I have to go there because I got to meet up with Sammy, and that's where the majority of the YT hosts are from. You got Old Dog, you got Sunshine Shoulders, Sass, Vicky. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, yep. Filipina P is from there. Yep, Jill. Ging. That's right. I forgot about that. I yeah, there's a lot of them that live on uh, Sammy's Island there. Yeah. Yeah, I think Filipina P was, uh, you know, he just in relationship with the Western guy. I think she I'm was. Sure. I don't know if she still is, but I think she was. Well, I, I just want to get a picture taken with her and her autograph. That's all I want because of her popularity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. She seems she cool. seems like a pretty pretty decent girl, though. Oh, yeah. Like Rafi Tufalo. He's so famous, I'd like to get a picture and an autograph from him, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> But if you ever show it to anybody, they'll think you're on his show. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a lot of things happened to me by accident when I was over there in 16. They just okay. ele elected Durte as, as their president, and they loved right. him. And we had to leave the Manila Hotel and go to the peninsula in Makati because the hotel was already booked because he was having an event there with a bunch of dignitaries. And everybody's standing out front, and you know he comes out. 
And a guy like me, six foot five, white dude, you wouldn't notice. He looked right at me and he walked right up to me and I shook his hand. I was like, and he goes, you live in the Philippines? I said, oh, yes, Mr. President. I really appreciate it. Congratulations. I'm Mr. called him Mr. President. I never met a, um, a world leader before. I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, the best I ever did is met a governor. Yeah. That was the governor of Idaho, Cecil Andrus. He was a good governor, too. <laughs> Yeah, but you know him being the leader of a country. I've never met one before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, Mr. President. Yeah. yeah, me neither. I don't. I love the Philippines, Mr. President. It's great. I didn't expect to meet the guy, you know. Well, but, of course. You know, but that's somebody crazy. that st that sticks out like a sore thumb, like I did. <laughs> you know, he went right to me. <laughs> Well, but honestly speaking, it's it's hard to it's hard to shake a hand from a pre, for for a president, yes. especially for us locals. He shook my hand. I was like, I was honored, you know. Yeah. Because you're a foreigner. Yeah. Well, that and you stand out so much that. Well, I stand yeah. above everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you put me in a crowd of a thousand panes. Where's Sean at? Oh, he's right there. There can be a thousand people between me and you. You'd see me from the chest up. Oh, Sean's right there. <laughs> <laughs> because well, Sean is a giant. I'm almost tall enough for him to see me. But I'm only 5'9". You know what? I felt, I felt like Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> when, when he was uh, in, in the Shia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when he went through the round door into uh, Bilbo's house. Hit his head on the chandelier. Reminded me of getting hit in the head with a <laughs> ceiling fan. <laughs> I remember you talking about that. I will never forget that the ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> but that happened in 13. That was my first trip to the Philippines. Are you okay? That might explain a lot about Sean. Getting hit in the head. <laughs> oh, when I was over, the weirdest shit happened to me over there. One thing from the next. Somebody said, hey, there's a UFO that just landed. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> At the rate things were going. Yeah. Well, do you believe in UFOs? I believe we have been visited, yes. Okay, it, it would that, be. That's a safe it, answer. <laughs> It would be uh, very naive to think that we're the only thing in existence and the, that is intelligence in the universe. Right. Universe so is a big place. Well, uh, there is a UFO. This, this is another uh, another creation of uh, God, you know. Yep. But uh, they, they, they are not look like us, but they are more intelligent than to us, you know. Well, if but some of them... If they're able to travel in their cellar like that, they have to be more intelligent than us. Yeah, the, some of the yeah. stories are very telling. And one that I believe, and this is not just on faith, there were so many kids involved in this, and it happened in Australia. If Halfwit is here, he probably knows what I'm talking about. All these kids out in the playground witnessed these UFOs, and they had to discuss it in the school. It was really big. Yeah. And I'm like, Children like that are not going to lie, and they're all telling the same story. Yeah. It would make my ass hair stand up, because you're not going to get a bunch of kids to tell a BS story like that, and it lasts. Not that many right. kids, anyway. Right. And it'd be the exact same story. Yes. Maybe if half, if half wit, you still in here, help me out here. I know it happened in Australia. I don't know. No, I don't he's remember from New exactly Zealand. Where. He's from New Zealand. Yeah. Well, he yeah, but he gets the Australian news too. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that story was very telling. That one there. That one, when yeah. I was what reading about it. What happened to the alien anyway? Tell me. What happened? I I don't know the exact story, but they were they seen these saucers and one girl disappeared. Ah oh, shit! Sorry. Oh yeah. 
it was a serious story. Yeah, sure. I you, think you, you uh, talk that they, way around us. they abducted it and they, they will try to study the human human body. That's what the aliens I, doing. I believe in that abdu abductions and stuff. I wish they'd come and take me. Maybe they can fix everything. Well, the and and then the fire in the sky. They did a movie about it. Even to this day, they they still question them in the same answer. What happened to those uh, that lumberjack out in Cal uh, Arizona? Yep. He he was abducted. He was disappeared for four days, and then shows up nude in in a payphone, far from home. He calls yeah. home, and he was gone for four days. Uh, that just don't happen. Right. And there was a trucker driving. I can't remember the exact specifics about it but he was driving cross like cross country and he woke up and he was already where he was supposed to be going which would have taken like six or seven hours and can't remember anything yeah because uh, what they're doing they will try to hypnotize you or they will put something that you put to sleep and this yeah. uh, this creature, what they're going to do, they, they will try to scan our body. They will compare our body through their, through their futures. Or sometimes they, they try to take away some parts of our body. Like there are some people, uh, the one who, who are abducted, they, uh, they, they cut some, some bones or something. Oh, my God. Some of them, their ribs. Oh, my God. That's, uh, that's really disgusting, you know. Yeah. Then they, they will wake up that uh, they're in pain. Yeah, because uh, these aliens, they got something from their body, you know? Yep. Well, like I say, I, I look forward to getting abducted so they can fix me. The thing is, what kind of a fixing they're going to do sometimes? Well, they, that's, it, that, is, that is the danger there. Yeah, yeah. I they, they can <laughs> fix my... Pelvis, because my pelvis is tilted. If they can fix that, I'll be like, "Hey, Vix, man." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. You guys are the best. Would you like to be friends? No. Okay. Later. <laughs> but here's the problem, and this is what I tell everybody. Okay, let's look. At can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, someone tried calling me. I don't know who it was, but this is what I tell everybody. If okay, let's me and you, you share half wit and Leonard here. We all getting on this 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 uh, spaceship, okay? And we can go back any time in history we want. Say we go back to the old Neanderthal days where uh, humans were living in caves, everything like that. Now we're looking down at them. They don't see us. They don't notice we're up there because we're out of sight, and we're looking down at them, um, would you be uh, willing to want to go down there and introduce yourself to these primitive people? Nope. <laughs> or would you be like, I want to stay away, because, you know, someone like me with the long hair, they may burn me to the stake thinking I'm a witch or something. You, know? you don't really want to jump down. Now, do you think these aliens would want to come down here, considering their technology is way more advanced than ours, and you know, look down, would you want to come down here and introduce yourself? I don't know. Now, now, if they want to do a bunch of studies on me, you know. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be real careful about that. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't you be know, too quick to want to go down there and introduce myself either. Yeah, me. <laughs> that doesn't me, bother me. Yeah. Me, what what I'm with me if I'm if I'm going to choose um what uh what time travel let's say um this alien can do a time travel. I will I will ask the alien to bring me in the time of uh, Romanov. I'm I, I I wanted to know how come this kids was killed. Very young, very young kids. They've been killed because of uh you know just the end of imperial of the Tsar family. I just want to know. I want to speak oh. out or something. You mean the the Russian Tsar by his children yes, was murdered? Yes, 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 yes. Because first of all, um. I know it, it was in the side of Lenin because Lenin, uh, Lenin's brother, actually they are rebellion kids. Uh, they are rebellion students during uh, during the time of uh, the Russian Revolution. The father, yeah, Rev Russian Revolution. 
they killed the, the grandfather of Tsar Nicholas. And now well, this, this guy is uh, re trying to revenge. He's doing revenge, actually. Uh, well, when you're starving your people out and they, they have... They have the power to, you know, get together and create something. And instead of giving the surplus and everything to the leaders, and they're just barely, and they're barely finding ways to feed themselves. It's just like the French did in 1789. They beheaded all those people in the in France. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like this, like over here in the states, the French aristocracy didn't see it coming either in 1789. Just yeah. like. A lot of people are blinded because they don't see it happening here. Oh, it will. <laughs> hmm. I, they uh, keep this I, austerity uh, up. It will. Okay, uh, I will remind. I will remind the leader just in case there's a problem. Well, why don't you try to talk about rather than uh, killing this uh, this uh, y younger kids? You know, ages. Uh, there's an adult, twenty two, nineteen. Uh, 17 and 13. Weren't they trying to, to end the bloodline? No. It, you, cannot, you cannot end their bloodline. You know why? It's because it's related to, uh, to Queen Victoria. Related oh. to, uh, to, uh, to the father of uh, Prince Char uh, King Charles. Related to Queen Elizabeth. How can you end up like that? How well, see, stupid. Lennon. Okay, go yeah, on. Well, and the Russian Revolution, Lenin was the revolution. And yeah. when a lot of Americans were told to not like a caricature instead of not like the reality. And they, we didn't, they didn't teach about the revolution, Russian Revolution. They didn't think it was necessary. Yeah, certain people in the United States who are rich and the corporations do, would not want us to know about why the Russian Revolution happened. Same reason why the French Revolution happened. People were tired of being poor and hungry and homeless. Yep. And when they're capable. Now, what Lenin did was, the, what they know as the Soviet flag, you see the sickle and the hammer with the North Star at the top of it. Yep. We demonized that. Everybody considered that like looking at a pentagram of devil worship. And I'm like, really? I said, do you know what that symbol symbolizes? And when you ask them, they can't tell you. And it's obvious. I said, who uses a hammer? Who uses a yeah. sickle under the North Star? The working a farmer does. Yep. Yeah, it's a worker, workers and farmers of the world unite. That's what it was about. And do you think that the wealthy and the uh, corporate class want us to know about that? Oh, they don't want not. us to be united because it affects their life. Their life. That means they're not going to be the ruling elite anymore. Yeah, that's why they're so anti-union and stuff. Yes. Even though unions aren't as strong as they used to be. But uh, still, people are still better than nothing. Yeah, they demonized them, and they were like, "You they don't know a thing about Lenin." They're like, "Oh, Lenin killed all these people." Naturally, a lot of people are going to die in a revolution. There are more people died in the name of capitalism than any other reason. World Wars One and Two were capital of wars a bunch of capitalist countries. <sighs> and then you got yeah, yeah the, the the you know what Lenin did, or like what Lenin did. Lenin was the revolution, but he died shortly thereafter. He gets a brain aneurysm in 1922, and he's dead in 1923. Yeah, because it's a karma to him. Uh, you know, killing, killing the younger kids. Yeah, but he, what he did was for the greater good of the people, because Russia was a backward, poor country, okay? But, now look, but for, look. Listen, listen. You can, you can exile the kids. You can bring it to the UK. Hey, kids, you're not allowed anymore here. But killing, it's really, uh, oh, my God. It, it, take it. I, I don't think it was Lenin that did it. But, however, what it was, I just lost my train, train of thought. <laughs> I think it's the Bolshevik is the one who killed it. And they're the, uh, uh, the, the group of uh, Lenin, you know. Yeah, you got to look at that. The R R Russia, one of the poorest countries, you know, during, after their revolution. And what they went through in World War II, more people died in Russia than any other country. All combined. Now, what they went through and to become the second world power economically is extraordinary. 
in a short period of time, they did that. China, same thing. They had their revolution in 1949, and look at them now. They're rivaling us as a superpower economically. Yep. That's not by accident. It's because people do not want to be poor. And look how fast they grew economically, just like Russia. So if you're looking for economic growth, then Russia and China way is clearly the way to go. <laughs> economically. I'm not saying that we should be like these people. but I just learned about is the fact that I don't like history. <laughs> you don't like what? I don't like history. I hate history class. <laughs> But this is important. I know it's important, but we're doomed to repeat history no matter how many times we do it. It's inevitable. Besides, we're already going to get beaten up by aliens and AI bots at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we're going to have a war between aliens and AI. So, who do you think is going to win? Androids? Cyborgs? But. You know? But that was an experiment, and uh, Russia, Russia, you know, uh, the USSR was an experiment. Was it the idea, ideas of the founding members of the revolution, like Lenin? Yeah. No, it wasn't, because when Stalin in 1956 stood up and said, "This is communism," uh, Lenin would have been rolling in his grave saying, "We haven't achieved it yet. It is not communism." And people get, especially here in the States, they get an economic system mixed up with a government system. Everybody's thinking that communism is authoritarianism. It's not. They're two different things. Communism is an economic system, not a government one. When you talk to Chinese people and you say communism, they don't know what the hell you're talking about. They'll tell you they're Marxist. Mm -hmm. And even then, a lot of Americans still wouldn't know what the hell they're talking about. But they think that they do know because they were told to believe and accept without question that this person's evil and they don't know a thing about them. I yep. question everything that we do. Because when I read it and went through it, I broke my toe reading a book called Das Kapital. When I read it, I was pissed because this is shit that I should have been told and taught. But we weren't because of fear. Yeah. It's fear and their desire to control us. Exactly. Like I tell everybody, Karl Marx was born in 1818. That's very important because that's the first generation after the French Revolution. And Marx was a tremendous admirer of the French Revolution. The slogans on the banner, liberty, equality, fraternity, dem democracy. He was all in favor of all that. Because Marx lived in, in uh, Trev, Germany, which is the neighboring city on the French-German border uh, called Tria. In French, it was Tria and Trev in German. Or Tria in German, Trev in French. And when he became a young man, he seen 50 years of capitalism in Europe. And then he did an analysis, and he wanted to become a philosopher at the university, which was, was his first job. But he noticed struggles in the street, and he went and talked with them, which you weren't supposed to do. And he wrote articles about their, uh, their situation, which you weren't supposed to do. So what the university did is they fired him. And if political dissent like that, they didn't kill you. Uh, exile was the preference, so they shipped him to France, so they told him that he was coming. The French said, you ain't going to stay here, so they sent him to Brussels. Brussels says, you ain't staying here, so you're going to London. And London didn't, London didn't make you leave. A lot of exiles were in London. So Marx spent most of his life as a citizen of London, and he wrote for uh, a, a New York newspaper called The New York World during the our, our Civil War, and he wrote about the situations there to the Europeans and he understood English. He spoke German and French. You know, he was only a part of the two or three percent that had an education like that at that time. But his analysis of the economic system is like, this is what's going to happen. And what's happening now. It's like he looked into a crystal ball and knew what was going to happen because he, because he did the analysis. This is the way it works. And he was in favor of an alternative. He said, Capital, uh, 
the French Revolution was great for bringing in capitalism. But capitalism, it turned out, was not the vehicle or the means to bring us liberty, equality, or fraternity. And Mark's life work was to answer the question, why not? And he was the best at it. But everybody thinks that he's, that this is an evil Santa Claus looking man. I know. And I tell people, read the book and then come back and talk to me about it. But a lot of Americans won't read. And if they did, they wouldn't understand it. Oh, no. Marx is written in every language. Marxism spread quicker than any movement in history. It moved faster than, than uh, Islam did or, or Christianity. When no, you look I at mean, global movement, yeah. like, whoa. I don't, mean, I don't mean that. I mean, they wouldn't understand it because it's far ahead of what they, what they understand. Yeah, it wasn't what they were told. They were, they were, right. Everybody was taught to demonize this man and know as little about him as possible. Whatever logic you find in that, welcome to the United States for 70 years. Yep. And people think he didn't have anything to teach us, and I'm like, don't be silly. He had plenty to teach everybody. Yeah, I know they, they taught us in school that he was terrible. Professor Sean Moore. <laughs> <laughs> he knows everything. My God, are you walking encyclopedia, Sean Moore? No, it's just what I do know in my wheelhouse. Yes, there, there's a lot of things I don't know about. I may know something here or there, but when it comes to economic and history, oh, yeah, you're in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I and I went to these that. countries on purpose, not just, just to see the sites, because a lot of Americans feel like they're an expert of that country because they visited there and saw the sites. I'm like, no. What else did you do? Or did you just go see the sites and eat the food? No, when I went there, I went to a library. I went to a police, a theater. I talked with people, and I learned a lot, and I had a lot of my questions answered. That's the best way. Especially Germany. Germany is where I did the most of that. Because you go to Berlin today, on every street corner, every street named Karl Marx LA, Karl Marx Platz, Karl Marx Circle, everything is Karl Marx is all over the place. And when you talk to these very conservative uh, Germans, why you do that, they look at you as if you're crazy and go, that's Karl Marx. We're really proud of what he did, what he accomplished. Him and, and Rosa Luxemburg. Rosen Luxemburg was also a revolutionary, just like Marx. But before World War II, the German army hacked, hacked her body and threw it in the Lumpet Canal there in Berlin. They have plates mounted in, in the pavement on the streets of Rosa Luxemburg in her famous sayings. I confused the hell out of a lot of people. I said, do you realize that there was a revolution in Bavaria at the same time, or shortly after Russia had theirs? This was, you know, between World War One and Two, they wanted to set up the Bavarian Soviet Socialist Republic, a name that sort of rings a bell. And the name of this guy, he was down in um, Munich. The name of the, the guy that was heading this revolution in Bavaria was named was Kurt Eisner. The leader of the Bavarian Revolution was a Jew. Complicated, isn't it? And people look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, ah, yeah, he was Jewish. <laughs> you just see the looks on some of these people's faces that don't know that, and you tell them that, and they're like, really? Yes! This is important history you should know. Yeah, people usually fall asleep in class nowadays. <laughs> well, they're on their phones now. <laughs> yeah, they fell, fell asleep in class when I was in school, too. I did it once, and I didn't like it because I only did it because I didn't like English class because I hate reading books. Yeah, I, I, well, I loved reading books. I just didn't like, you know, the reading or writing part. This I before E stuff has got Einstein screwed up twice in his name. Yeah. I like biology. <laughs> that, was my favorite class. that was my second favorite class besides math. Yeah, I also didn't like English. <laughs> English but that's your stuff. language. How come you don't like your you don't like English? I, I had to relearn it when I was four because of my head injury. So I had to relearn yeah, I've it. Always, ah, okay. I've always wanted to take sex ed. Everybody talks about it. I'm like, they didn't offer that in my day. 
No, Shit, I'd love either. to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I speak English, but what they teach you in English is a lot of crap that you don't need just to get by in life. You oh, do if you're okay. going to be a teacher or something like that. Okay. But I don't need to know how to, what do they call it? Dissect the sentence. I know how to I know how to make it correct, more or less. Well, yeah. you learn about pronouns and all that other crap when you're yeah. in school, and when you get out of school, you forget all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of the time you forget it. Yeah. Now it's like you speak very good English, sure. Uh, I have to because since I. Uh, my sub, my uh, course is Bachelor of Fine Arts Major in Advertising. I have to advertise my artwork, plus I have to explain it yeah. through English. Yeah, That's Sarah, it is. Cher could easily probably get a job at a call center. Cause, no, cause English actually, is so good. I failed many times. They would, I failed really? many times. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, would, they would bust her on her age. Yeah. Yeah. I failed many times. Because the bosses got to feel like they can get laid by these younger Pinays. It's like, Some you more. dirty bastard. <laughs> yeah. That's all that's about. Oh, my God. That's yeah. probably true. <laughs> no, it's because I know men. Yep, that's probably true. But, you know, they have, uh, as I've heard, they have advertisements out for girls that are between 18 and 23 or 25 and they got to be sexy and speak English good and all this stuff. But you get over 25 and they don't, don't want to hire you anymore. True. I agree with you, uh, uh, Leonard. Yeah, if I was a businessman, I, 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 yeah. I would have someone like Blessed Life working for me. <laughs> yep. But I'm not a capitalist. I am a self-employed <laughs> business owner in a capitalistic system. Yeah. Okay. Slightly different. Mm-hmm. Because I believe we can do better. That idea, we can do better, that got us out of slavery, that got us out of feudalism, reasonably to assume, it'll get us out of capitalism too. You can, uh, plus, if you're working as a freelance, you can decide by yourself. You, you don't need, you know, the, the, the opinion of your boss, you know. You can execute your uh, ideas very well. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I'm down for the next 12 hours. Yeah, that sucks. Well, you get some good mm -hmm. rest, though. Well, I can join in on a lot of uh, live streams, too. That's true. Do, do some singing. I really like the way you sing, like uh, Summer Breeze. Well, Sa Sammy asked me, he goes, uh, sing it like J. Mike. And I'm like, okay, come over here and kick me in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> now, J. Wow. Mike kind of pissed me off. J. Mike kind of pissed me off because he gave her a bad time about the way she was singing. And he's got a voice change run all the time. Nobody even knows what he sounds like. Doesn't surprise me. I mean, I like J. Mike and everything, but yeah, it I does. Do it sounds like somebody's standing on his nuts when he's singing. Yeah. And it's like he sings songs that... I think we lost our host here. <laughs> it's like he sings songs that are uh, originally sung in a kind of a deep voice. And he uses that voice changer and makes it sound like he's, I don't know, Yaki Doodle or something. <laughs> I mean, I like him too. I enjoy his shows. But... <laughs> yeah, Sammy, Sammy already knows this, but... You know, I could go get all these. If I was to show up there with Darren and we go to uh, 
Doomageddy or whatever, and we get Sammy and all the other YT hosts together. Yeah, I, I said I can already see it now. We're all having a good time, and in the backyard or courtyard somewhere, Sammy and J Mike are going at it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's watching. I don't like that. You know, we're not against the J-Mark, okay? No, no, I like <laughs> We're just I having fun him. here. I enjoy his life, but... No, I just admit <laughs> that those two fighting each other, it's entertaining. And I, <laughs> I enjoy it. I told Sammy that. I enjoy watching you two fight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I missed Sammy that. Sammy went up and really mad. What did you do to, to Sean? <laughs> oh, my God. That's the person. <laughs> God. Uh, Sammy makes me laugh so much. Oh, yeah. I love her lives because it's always funny. Yeah, but you cannot make jokes with her, especially if he, if he, if, if you make uh, bad things to one of his her friends. My God, oh, she, he will she's... come up in the panel and get ready. <laughs> She's a fighter. I'll fuck your ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, all, I did, all I said was, can I watch? <laughs> yeah, really. That'd be a hell of a sight. I would. I'd like yeah. to see that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, J. Mike was offended on that. And he was, he, he was blaming uh, a Darren. For what happened, it's just like why. Uh, why Darren doesn't get involved in it. No. He said, yeah, "Fight he it amongst yourselves." Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. He said, "Fight it amongst yourselves." He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. uh, Darren's good people. <laughs> but I tell you, I said, you know, and I'm not lying here. My mom owned a bar for thir 20 years until she got too old and she couldn't do it anymore. And. uh she was a former Chicago police officer, opened a bar in South Carolina and owned it for 20 years. And I witnessed a lot in that bar. My sister was oh, friends. My yeah. My, that's how I made some of my money. You know, I'd clean the place up really nice for my mom yeah. after all these drunks and everything. But my sister had a lot of friends and a lot of them were trannies and gays and she had them all. We were not a non-judgmental family is what it is. And one of our regulars was named was Bobby. And he was trans, yes. And we had a lot of bikers coming in because this was a go-to place before you went down to Daytona every year. Because all the bikers would, you'd see thousands of bikes in my mom's parking lot. Yeah. And they'd, they'd be flying colors. We'd have Seminons. We'd have the Mongols. We'd have Hell's Angels, Iron Coffins. We had them all in there. And my mom put a sign up, says, you keep the business outside the bar. Inside, no business. We're all bikers. We're all friends here. And they did. They all were de decent to each other. But one of these Hell's Angels fought, uh, saw fit to pick a fight with Bobby. Bobby only weighs 130 pounds. Okay? Small guy. And this 300-pound biker saw fit to pick a fight with him. Well, Bobby's gay ass wore him out. Nobody got involved. And the, even the president of the Hell's Angels said, hey, he started that fight. He's on his own. Don't you help him. And, oh, man, they, he was ruined. He picked a fight and, and got his ass beat by, by a tranny. Oh, yeah, you're ruined. And it was they were laughing, actually. Man, she, that, 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 that tranny wore your ass out. <laughs> I did. 130-pound 130, 130 tranny kicked the shit out of a 30-pound biker. Man, it was the hell, damnedest thing I ever saw. That's why I say, you better be careful picking on these gay or trannies. They will whip your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm just going by what I saw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, HippyDP89, what are you doing over there? Uploading videos. <laughs> yeah. And listening to you guys videos. talk about. Most of the time. Yeah. I'm always make, uploading always videos. Did. I have like, I have like. Hi, Jipping John. I'm always up you you can videos. you can come up here and join with us. Uh, yeah. This is American talk. 
yeah, I'm just listening. Pretty funny. When I, I'll drop the link. When I worked for the UFCW, the union, there was a lot of uh, a lot of you know gay and, and and trans people. There were a lot of what we call dykes. A lot of you know, yeah. like Buddha. Yeah. But these women are like we would call butch dykes. Yeah, they're yeah. they're like dudes, but they're women. And there was this religious dude talking about this sort of thing, you know, about women being the weaker vessel. And I I looked at him. I told him. Go over there and tell those women that there's a weaker vessel. <laughs> he would have got his ass whooped. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What is this? At work. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean is really entertaining here. This is the reason why I really, I really want. Sean in my panel because Sean talks about life uh, compared uh, to other YouTubers. And I add humor, yeah. uh, even though it's yeah. factual, but it's funny too. Yeah, you, yep. you add humor, and you know, I, I'm a type of person who likes to talk about information. Yeah, yeah you, you can talk that. about your channel. But you can talk what? it's much better to talk about life. Yeah, but what I what I talk about is nothing new and it's gonna be helpful to people. It's not to hurt their feelings or yeah. you know, talk bad about them or anything. It's just to uh, let them know like, hey, this is the way things used to be and it wasn't too far from our past history. If your grandparents were still alive, they'd be like, He's telling you the truth. Yeah. Yeah, you got a, a ton of really good information, Sean. Well, I think I, I tribute that. Well, I, I tribute that to my college professor, Dr. Professor Richard Wolf. He's the one that he didn't teach. He didn't teach us what to think. He taught us how to think. How to think, right. Yeah. He said, go read this book and then we'll, we'll, we'll and then come back. We'll talk about it. So he made us do the work and it made his job so much easier. And he told us that. Yep. That's the best way to do it, though. And he looked at me, and he goes, you're angry, aren't you? He goes, yeah. And I broke a toe reading the book you told me to read. He goes, you're kidding me. I, I took my shoe off at sea, and he laughed. He said, you're probably the only one in the history to read Dust Copy Tell and break a toe. Because <laughs> I... Because I slammed, I slammed the book shut and threw it down because I, I, was, I was angry. I should have known all this. And it hit my foot and it broke my toe. <laughs> yeah, see, most, most normal people would have threw it out the window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I was angry. Yeah. So they got mad, but then he chucked it out the window and sit on their foot. And he 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 told you, he stopped you he stopped me he goes you can't blame the 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 kids of the past and your parents because they probably didn't know either they were taught and told the same thing yep because I was looking at them like where were y'all on this one dipshit why didn't we learn about this when we were going to school because they weren't are you on a student that Sean when you're younger me. Uh, no, yeah. I, I was the, uh, known as the class clown and the person most likely not to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much because me as well. John... No, because the way you talk, you know, I, well, I've learned a lot of things from you. Well, they don't have uh, um, class reunions like they used to back in the day. About 10 years ago, they still have them. They just, you know, show up to homecoming. Every week they've always had homecoming. And it doesn't matter what year you graduated, you're alumni, you just show up during homecoming. And that's become like the class reunion type thing now. And I said, the only reason why people show up is for a, a couple of reasons. One is to see who's still alive. Two, who, 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 uh, who gained a ton of weight, and three, who turned gay. That's the only reason why people show up. Yeah, that's not that's not very funny, really, at our age, Sean. <laughs> my last reunion. No, I mean, no, my last that. reunion. I, that much. My last reunion I went to because we still have them like like they used to. Well, we did anyway. But my that's last reunion I went to, man. They. There were like seven or eight guys that died that I didn't know. Because oh. I haven't been back. I didn't haven't lived back home for years. Oh, wow. Like, uh, 
but you'd be surprised at who was gay in school that went straight <laughs> and who was totally straight that went gay and who's alive and who's not. And it was like, he was the honor student. He was the class president and he OD'd on Coke. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't surprise they're like, me. They're like, Sean, you haven't changed a bit. I'm like, oh. Is that, well, that's, is that's that a compliment or not? I don't know. <laughs> Usually the goofballs are the ones that usually don't change at all. Yeah. Really funny, you know. Yes. You know, even me, uh, I went to my alumni, and uh, honestly speaking, most of my classmates, they they came from a rich family, and some of them, they well-to-do. I'm the only one who was nothing over there, and I'm really shy, you know, to to tell my life to them. And I, I'm, I attended there because they wanted to see me because they know me as an artist when I was in high school. So uh, I'm trying to be humble that time. And uh, <clears throat> they're asking me, what is my business? I, I cannot say anything because I don't have a life. I'm, I'm just starting now and I have my daughter as a single mother. I'm struggling, but I don't care. I just attended there. I just want to see my classmates and that's it. But, you know, the telling telling what I achieved, I don't like it, to be honest. It's like, reunion, it's like uh, seeing only those people you really want to know. Just like what Sean yeah. said. Yep. But I don't like to talk about, oh, I have like this, I have like, oh, come on. Yeah. I don't want to brag what I have. I uh, just they want like, to see what the people they, they made me get up and make a speech because usually our class, class president would have done that. But since I was the clown, they made me do it. And uh, I just told them, uh, like, you know, it's interesting how everybody's life went, you know, and, was, you know, especially I can only comment about my own. I said, you know, I told everybody, I said, if you're not married yet, don't worry about it. Don't fret over it. You still got time. This was this was like like 20 years ago. And I said, you know, don't fret over it. I said, you know, don't be too quick to get married. You know, and don't be too quick, you know. If you don't like each other, pack up. Yep. You know, I believe, you know, you know, shack up. And if you don't like each other, pack up. I got married. And fu I fucked up and got married. <laughs> oh, God. And then God. I got divorced. And then I got married again. I got married, remarried. Then I got divorced again. I don't have all the you know, answers. Rosalie Green blog. <laughs> there she is. Oh come on! You know what? Rosalie is a star now. She's always in the in the live stream of Rani Raimundo. He's a famous uh, singer here in the Philippines yeah. and also an artist as well. I'll be wow, right back. Wow, amazing! Yeah. Hi, right, Rosie. How are you? Yeah, I'm very proud of her. She's a good singer. I think I've heard her, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's very good. Uh, sometimes they they collab with uh, our life and our world. These are uh, the girls who are dancing and singing. You try to subscribe. They they're wearing a mask actually, like a masquerade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. That's your big success. And soon uh, we will see you now uh, having your own record. Record Yay! label. People think I'm just... A I don't know. Well, I, I just subscribed to you, Rosalie. Yes. It's very good in music. Amazing, very amazing woman. She's living in the USA also. Oh, where in the US are you? I think she will answer you. Oh, there she is. Tennessee. All right. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Houston, Texas. Ah, okay. Hey, your Houston Rockets won. 
Yeah. They've been doing pretty good this year. Beat Milwaukee. Too early, too early to know, though. Yeah. I, 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 did, good. I, I did this live stream because uh, I just want to do a uh, introduction about this uh, portrait of uh, the son of my friend. He's a YouTuber also, but he doesn't want to reveal his name. No, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's coming along good. Yeah, I I try all only monochromatic, you know. But later I will sing a Christmas song for you guys just to wake you up, because we we talk <laughs> po politics here. Yeah. So uh, hold on, I'll sing a one song for you guys. Mm. Yeah, actually, it wasn't politics; it was economics. Yeah. That's Sean specialty. Mm -hmm. I'll try the song of uh, this one uh, to Amy Grant. Okay, hold on, guys. I'll just uh, yeah, I'll sing now. Little girls are listening. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I have a problem in my language. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you were about to say that, and all of a sudden, you're like, you oh, I'm know. sorry, I'm sorry. You didn't know what language Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Label rings, are you listening? In the lane, slow is glistening. The beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Come away, it's the bluebird. Here to stay, it's the new bird. The sing along song as we go along. Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we can fill the snowman And pretend that he is Parson Brown Here in Thunder Mary we'll see no man But you can do the job and wear your town Later on we'll conspire As we dream by the fire the face on a parade, the plans that we made, walking in a winter wonderland. Woo! We got a love shout out to everyone. Flavoring, saw you listening in the lane. Snow is glistening. The beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter. Walking in a winter. Walking in a winter. Wonderland. Woohoo! Yay, very good, very good. Yeah, we're having, uh... yeah. But I'll sing this this song. I tried this one. Okay, guys. I hope uh, you will allow me. Of course. <laughs> This one much better. Okay. Bad. Oh, wait. I'm running. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She's running away from the song. Silver bells, 
Circle bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas day. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, there's a holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, making smile after smile. On an everything the corner you hear. Silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Strings of street lights, even stoplights, twinkle hard red and green. As the shoppers rush home with their treasures. Hear the snow crunch, see the kids rush, then the Santa's sweet scene. On above all this bustle you hear. Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Oh my God. That was That's nice. Merry Christmas to everyone. That was nice. That was nice. Better than me, I sing like dead chickens. <laughs> I heard that once. I mean yeah. the dead chicken, not you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> hey, Sherry, you colored that in? I just noticed it. Which one? This one? Yeah, it lo looks like you added color to it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, I will try to color it uh, into a blue, like a monochromatic. That's what I'm doing. <sighs> and the owner agrees to me. I'm going to switch over to my laptop. I'm all right. I'm on my laptop 24-7. I wish you will oh. sing, Sean. I love to hear oh. your voice. <laughs> well, when I'm driving, I, I can't be on my laptop. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on my phone. <sighs> well, you're not See, driving what I, now, are you? Huh? You're not driving now, are you? No, I'm down for the next 24 hours. See, share. look. There's steering wheels right here. Okay. And... See how they're open? See, I got curtains right here. I just pull around here, and I got privacy. It's like being in my own room. Ah, oh, that's, cool. that's nice. That is cool. Yep. And then here's my bunk. I just went inside and bought a bunch of Propel bottled waters. That's what I mostly drink. I love the mango if I can find it, but that mango. flavor is hard to find. Oh, yeah, the mango propel waters. Oh, my God, those are good. Sounds delicious. Do they have a lot of sugar in them? No sugar. Oh, no salt. Nice. Oh, it's like, like if I bought the lemon propel, it's like making a glass of ice water and taking a slice of lemon and dropping it in it. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I'll keep that in mind. It's very healthy. There's no sugar, no artificial flavors, no none of that crap. No, that's good. And because I did that and stopped drinking soda pop, I even I was drinking diet, mind you. 
I, I, dro I dropped 80 pounds just for doing that. Wow. I need a cup from soda or something. <laughs> the only thing is, drink, drinking bottled water, it's healthy for you. It flushes your system out, but, man, it makes you piss all the time. Yeah. You switch to my diet and you'll lose more weight. Yeah, I, I don't eat any garbage. I've been doing really well. I got a Panay doctor. Yeah. And she brought her sister back with her because she's a medical assistant. Oh. And she, her sister is the one that that uh, gave me my, my physical. And that was very entertaining. <laughs> they got an interesting way of checking you for a hernia now. They don't make you drop drop your pants down or anything like that. You just stand there, and they stand beside you. And she goes, she's got the gloves, and she goes, "Okay, I'm going to check you for a hernia. All I'm going to do is, you hold your pants open a little bit, and I'll stick my hand down there." She did. Well, that was entertaining. I she stuck her, she stuck her hand down there, and I knew it was happening. And you know, I'm I'm not aroused or anything like that. Until she did what she did, but I think she did it by accident. She put her hand on there to take, uh, search, you know, me for a hernia. But the first thing she grabbed was the sausage. Yeah. She grabbed. <laughs> she she oh grabbed it and looked at me, and sh her eyes got real big. I know that look from a penne. Her eyes got real big, and she goes, "I'm sorry." She goes, "I'm sorry about that." I'm like, "No, that's okay." But yeah, I got excited. Naturally, anybody being grabbed like well, that is going to get course. them excited, and. She goes, she started laughing. She goes, I have to use my other hand. So she held on to it, moved it out of the way, and stuck the other hand down there to check for the hernia. <laughs> and she, yeah. and when, when she said cough, I went, ah. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I'm like, Ooh. you know, this closest I ever come to scorn with the panay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She thought it was funny, and her sister was picking on her. Dr. Lynn. Sounds like a doctor I need to see. Oh. She's a good doctor. Because <laughs> I tell you what, when you, it, it's not an easy task to surprise or shock a Panay. And I did that with her. She's looking at my paperwork. Her eyes got real big. And she could not believe that she said this is impossible. And that's when they found out I was asymptomatic to this coronavirus. Because this is impossible. And that's why she tested me again. And her husband's a biochemist, and he did it. I said, it's not impossible. It's just, it's not very common. Yeah, there are I'm not people. The only, by far, not the only one. No, there are people who are just totally, basically immune to it. And that's what I told her. Can you write me a piece of paper in Tagalog, Visaya, and everyone you can think of, and, and I can take it with me to the Philippines? Because then I won't be lying if it was a Filipina that was my doctor that tested me. I was trying to get over there earlier, you know, with that, you know. She goes, she goes, wait a year, it will be totally gone in a year. And she's right. Well, and, she, yeah, her and her husband went over for a month back in July. Yeah. Oh, is, she, is she is she married to a uh, American or Filipino? Yeah, yeah. She couldn't have picked a better one. He was a biochemist. They met each other. He was on a medical tour years ago in Japan, and then he went down to the Philippines for a medical thing there, and that's how they met. Oh, okay, that's nice. yeah. He's a biochemist. I thought she looked, was looked, the way she was looking at my paperwork last year, I thought she was going to say I had something that they never saw before. What do I got? You have yourself. Yeah. <laughs> We've never seen it before. We don't know That's, what it'll do. Well, that would be scary enough. <laughs> yeah. Like, Lou Gehrig, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm very happy that uh, you guys are here, and at least uh, I've been awake 
because the Sean is really funny. Everything Sean oh, he uh, Sean's 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 And he brings out my uh, quick wit. Well, well, look how who I idolized as a child from kindergarten. Uh, Robin Williams. I emulated that man since I was a little boy in kindergarten. I had the Mork from Orc suspenders. I still got them. Those are rare. And the only reason why I mention it is because I'm in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and that's who made them. The Oshkosh Magosh children's clothing line. They made, they created it. They thought the kids were going, oh, the kids are going mad because I was acting like Robin Williams. And when somebody egged the Catholic church across the street uh, from the school, they blamed me for it because of the TV show. And I, I appreciate Stevie Holmes. He he was in love with my sister. He was in high school, and he came forward and admitted he did it. Oh, yeah, you just drug a kindergartner in, in the principal's office and wanting to get the wood out and paddle his ass for it. And that was me. And I didn't do nothing, had nothing to do with it. I'm like, what am I doing here? I was scared. I was waiting for somebody to say, oh, wait, there was a tragic accident, and your parents are dead. You know, it was like that kind of moment, you know. I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. Because <laughs> usually that's what they do when they drag a child that age up to the principal's office. There was a tragic accident in the family. Or some, of the same, some family member died. I've been recording all day. I think this is the first week that I never watched football. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, the Texans had me excited up until the third quarter. I wanted the Texans to beat the Cowboys. I hate the Cowboys. Yeah, they've done fairly well. I don't like the Cowboys. Yep. Yeah. I was. I'm surprised that uh, Miles Davis did as good as he did. Well, they have nothing to lose because they're already eliminated from the playoffs. So it's might as well get yeah. all out. Because now they're just playing for a job <coughs> for next year. Yeah. That's why, even if you're eliminated from the playoffs, don't count that a that you can win instantly. Right. Unless you're the Buccaneers, because they suck. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like them either. I don't like them either, either. My team won, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm a long, I'm a long time Kansas City Chief and L.A. Ram fan, so. I'm a Bengals fan. Bengals are doing good this year. I love the Bengals. I've been a Bengals fan since the 90s when they sucked. <laughs> with, with Boomer Siason? I wasn't, I wasn't born, I wasn't alive when he was still playing, probably. I was yeah, born I in the 90s, so. I can't remember when he he retired. All I know is just that those years were terrible. I remember the L Andy Dalton years when they went to the playoffs and yeah. they won a single playoff game. That was brutal. Yeah, and they I always can't... lost to the same three teams: the Colts, the Steelers, and the Houston Texans. So yeah, they can't win. The Texans beat them two or three years in a row. Yeah, because it's the Bengals' way to choke in the playoffs. <laughs> They got real cool. Where did Sean go? I don't know. Might have lost connection. Oh, he's switching to his laptop. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Hey, I don't pick up on this stuff. <laughs> you watch, Any other sports you watch? Oh, I watch basketball. I have it this hockey? year, but I do. How about hockey? Yeah, well... I, I grew up being a Laker fan, but uh, 
Wow. Now I live, and then I, I was in Phoenix for 15 years, and I love the Suns. Team that can't win anything, apparently. What's up? They made to how many did the Suns make it to the NBA final? Twice. Twice. Okay. Yeah, they made it uh, like in the eighties or something, and then they made it again in '93. And they lost to the Chicago Bulls. I mean, yeah, they, and they lost a game they shouldn't have lost. The referee stole that game from them. Now, they threw away winning. the first two games. No question about that. They threw away the first two games. But I think it was, I'm not sure, but I think it was game seven. And the referee stole that game from them. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'm just looking for my uh, blender, okay? Oh, okay, that's fine. This blender is very important to me. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Uh, oh, if I uh, get the Christmas card, not yet, not yet, uh, pretty Annie. <laughs> Where is Sean? I'm in BG now. Okay, he's gone. Yeah, I think he was switching from it uh, to his laptop. Okay, that's good. And now, and he just hasn't come back on yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an exciting. I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted him to sing in the panel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, he's good. Sean's awesome. I always like hearing him talk because he has a lot of good stories. You got some great information. Yeah, I don't. I'm, it's, too young. It, 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 <laughs> I'm probably yeah. the youngest person here. Yeah, you're uh, the you youngest and the most handsome. Oh, hey. hey. I am very but. handsome. My poor ego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, all of you are handsome. All of you are good looking. Every person's good looking no matter what age you are. And that's what yeah, my opinion it's is. True. You got to have confidence in your, how you look. I've always said that, and that's how you become a better person. Yeah, that's, that's true. I I agree with you, hippie dp eighty nine. Oh yeah, there is Sean. Woohoo! Oh, hold on, <laughs> where is it? Sean is here. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. You need to sing now. Woo! Okay. Be careful, you don't get snake bit. Yeah, this, I, I I use this as a background whenever I do songs from White Snake. So cool. <laughs> okay, okay. Sing for us. Sing for us. Yeah, I'll do the one that I did in Key Chase, and then after I did the song, a dude crashed into the truck beside me, backing in, and I had to go out and stop them from killing each other. <laughs> well, maybe you should have just let them. <laughs> no, I can go out there and wait till the police get there. Okay. Yeah. Because people do things irrationally. That is true. But let's see, I had to leave. I wanted to stay on her, her live stream, but like I got I got to go, and I had to take off, and I I was out there for a couple hours. All yeah. Right, let me okay. There's there's no commercials. Good. Okay, you're going right. to sing now. I'll, I will be mute now. This is the song I did last night in Chiche's. I gotta fix my audio here. There we go. Okay. Here we go. I look back on everything I've done I know you must have cried a river of tears But you were there when I was feeling low To walk me through my darkest fears So when the sun goes down And those nights grow colder I will be there looking over 
your shoulder And the deeper the love The stronger the emotion And the stronger the love The deeper the devotion There were times I almost let you go when I thought I needed to break free. But you were there to whisper in my ear, why don't you share your dreams with me? So when the sun goes down and those nights grow colder, I will be there looking over your shoulder. The stronger the love, the deeper the devotion. I don't mind what you do into me. I don't mind, cause you're all I can see. I don't mind, baby, you mean the world to me. When the sun goes down and those nights grow with colder, I will be there. Looking over your shoulder, baby, baby, baby. Sun goes down and those nights are growing colder. I will be there looking over your shoulder. And the deeper the love, the stronger the emotion. And the stronger the love, the deeper the devotion. Stronger the emotion The stronger the love The deeper, the deeper, the deeper the devotion I'm never gonna let you go And in my heart I know I really love you, I love you Ooh, baby, I really love you Somebody told me, I think it was uh, Mike Journey. John. Nice. Another one. Another one. Um, he said White Snake is getting to be pretty big in, in the Philippines. Very good, great? Sean. Very good. Them and Metallica are getting to be pretty popular, even though they've been around for years. Shoot, White Snake's been around since the 60s. Can you guys hear me? Am I still here? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh. Yeah, see, um, I got signal. You can hear me, but um, my screen on, on YT here is frozen. I can hear you guys. I don't know if the chat's moving. You are moving. We can hear you. We can see you. Yeah, but I, you guys are frozen. But, I mean, I'm talking about the chat. I don't know if the chat's yeah, moving. Right. Or, is Rosalie Green still here? Because she sings very well, too. Yeah. Oh, I got to do that Christmas song, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we tried to get Rosalie up, but uh, she hasn't come up yet. Yeah. You got that right. Money, 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 money. <laughs>
yeah, this uh, J. Mike said, only Christmas songs. And be careful what you wish for. And I gave him a Christmas song. And he didn't like it. <laughs> oh, come on. You know J. Mike. Hey, it was a Christmas song, no? <laughs> I don't like playing Dark Souls sometimes. Yeah, I remember that. What, Dark Souls? G Mike not liking Sean's song. Ah. What's wrong with you? Sure. Sammy really did herself on this. See my back. Uh -huh. It looks just. Wow, like nice. That's her who sister. Is the, who's the two girls? That's Camille, her sister. And this is okay. uh, uh, Grizel, her friend. Okay. Nice. Sammy is really talented. You sing another you song, John. Yeah, give me a second. I got to make sure I get the right version because I hate it. So it sounds like a mini file. So I'm going to mute for just a second, okay? Okay. Yeah, just wait for Sean. <laughs> yeah, he's right. That is a great picture. Mm -hmm. He had another one here a short while ago that I really liked. It was... Uh, woman with a Native American headdress on. And I think yeah. part of her face is blue. And that was just a beautiful, beautiful background. Okay, I found it. Is Rosalie Green in here? I need to know. You can be G. Are you sure? Because I want her to hear this because this song is right up their alley. Uh, Rosalie can do this for Our Life, Our World, and it's right up their alley. If you punch it in and uh, look for the version with the girl with the red shirt and the black um, 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 patented leather pants. It means it's shiny, and she's got long black hair. A Filipina could look just like her easily. But she did a very good job at this song, but it's by ACDC. And uh, let me set up for another one. To, uh, I'll give you this one. That I did this. It was in Darren's live stream when I did it. And uh, it's to let you know what I want for Christmas. Here we go. <laughs> Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I can't wait for Christmas time so I can roll with you in the hay. Easy come, easy go. Having a good time, let's have a go. Slipping up high, slipping down low. Love them and leave them on with the show. Let's go. I like the female form in minimal dress. Money to spend with a capital S. Get a date with a woman in red. Wanna be in heaven with three in the bed. Oh yeah! One and me in heaven. He got it. I want it. They got it. I can't have it. But I want it. But it don't matter. She got it. And I can't get it. I want a mistress for Christmas. I want a mistress for Christmas. Oh yeah, in the bed. I want a mistress for Christmas. 
Sorry. Is there any song that you can sing again? I don't know what you mean. Um, if you can sing another song, if you like. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just got to find one. Yeah. I got a whole catalog of songs I can do. Some of them I have been experimenting with. Yeah, you, you have a wonderful voice. I really appreciate it. How you doing, uh, Leonard Lund? I'm going to try I'm another good. one that you haven't heard me do before. Yeah, I'm good. And later I will sing also after you sing, Sean. I don't remember what channel she... She goes into Darren's. But I, it was somebody else's channel. I can't remember if it was Our Life, Our World, Rosalie Green, or Chiche's. I can't remember which one of the three. She requested this song, and I did it out of the blue, and I thought, man, that's pretty cool. I'm going to put that one in part of the catalog. Here, I'll do this one. You'll like it. Hang on a second. Yes. See, some things happen by accident and usually can turn into gold. You're like, wow, I actually I did pretty well in that one, I think. Whoops. I think I did that wrong. Can you guys hear me still? Sheer, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, that's not it. That's a commercial, by the way. When premium and ingredients come together.
can be. Yeah, I actually like Roy Orbison's better myself, but that's just my opinion. That man, that man looked like a nerd, but I tell you what, man, women were killing themselves wanting to be with him. <laughs> well, you know, he's the only man, the only singer that Elvis Presley would not follow. And I heard well, Elvis say the that. The women liked him. Huh? The women loved Roy Orbison. Oh, Even did. though he looked like a downright nerd, you know, he figured women yeah. wouldn't give him a time of day, but no. Once once they heard him sing, then that was it. Nice. Woo-hoo! That was very, very good, Sean. Yeah. That one was by, by forced accident, you know, like, could you do this song? And I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And I, okay, there's Roy Orbison, there's Van Halen, and a few others that did it. I'll do the first one that comes up. And it was Van Halen. So I'm like, okay, I'll do Van Halen because I can do Van <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, your voice probably fits it better. I'll sing one song for you guys, okay? Well, I uh, added yeah. lyrics to it if you didn't pay attention in that song. <laughs> no one can look as good nude as you. <laughs> well, you always do that, so. Yeah. Uh, I'll sing an oldie song here. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Uh, I'm still looking for it. Uh, okay. There you go. Sorry, uh, I'm still... It was here. Uh, hold on. So many things to see here in my phone. Ah, this one. This is J. Mike's favorite. Okay, oh, I'm Leonard. going to sing this one, guys. Yeah, hold on one second. Leonard, these girls right here, these two, yeah. they're both in the bikini contest, too, which is funny. Great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know of Sammy's sister. I've seen her a few times. But I'm not sure who the other girl is. Yeah, I'm going to sing now, guys, okay? Okay, that's our friend Grizel. Yeah. Okay, here we go, guys. Yeah, speaking of J. Mike. <laughs> Thank you. 
with you before the second show. Your guitar, it sounds so sweet and clear, but you're not really here. It's like a radio. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. Baby, 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 baby oh, baby. I love you. I really do. Make a love shout out to everyone. Hey. Loneliness is such a sad affair, and I can hardly wait. To be with you again. What to say to make you come again? Come back to me again and play your sad guitar. Don't you remember? You told me you love me, baby. You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. Baby, 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 baby oh, baby. I love you. I really do. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. Baby, 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 oh, baby. I love you. I really do. Thank you very much. Nice singing. I'm gonna go because I gotta go eat lunch because I forgot to Okay. Eat oh. Thank you, Hippie DP89. Yeah, I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> Better eat. My hand, my stomach's eating itself. Hey, guys, stay positive. You yeah, too, Hippie. Thank you. Nice singing, all you guys. Gone. It's your turn. Oh, I haven't think of another song yet. <laughs> Doing some rock. Rosalie is here. Work now. It's working. Oh, is she oh. going to stay listening to us while she works or no? Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of sounds like it. Yeah, Rosalie, you need to look into that song uh, called uh, I Want a Mistress for Christmas by Hailstorm. You or um, Our Life, Our World should do that one. It's a Christmas song. Okay, I'm going to try another one from my friends and mine. 
They're from Cleveland. It's totally off the wall, too. I don't know why I'm thinking. My mind talks myself into doing me. Okay, I'm going to try this one. Let me switch over. Okay, here we go. This is by a band called Badlands. From Cleveland, Ohio. Cause yesterday's gone, dreams carry on Will you return my way, no Sing me a sweet, sweet song Turn out the lights and my love will burn on and on Hold me until tomorrow Dreams in the dark Dreams in the dark You pushed me, baby, a little too far Turn your back on my love and with my wounds in the bars Story you can control and the lesson is learned I know we are both lies and I know we you burn Cause yesterday's gone, dreams carry on Will you return my way, oh. Sing me a sweet, sweet song Turn out the lights and my love will burn on and on Hold me until tomorrow Dreams in the dark Baby, I know that you're leaving It's over, it's over, I know Now that my heart now is bleeding Don't know which way to turn That's Jackie E. Lee on lead guitar. He plays rock. Sing me a sweet, sweet song. Turn out the lights and my love will burn out and on. Hold me until tomorrow. Dreams in the dark. Sing me Turn out the lights and my love will burn on and on Hold me until tomorrow Dreams in the dark Dreams in the dark Dreams in the dark Oh Very nice, Sean. Well, Eric wouldn't have liked that. It Amazing. Sucks. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... I'm very happy that uh, you're singing again, Sean. Oh, I enjoy it. Sean, I know this is a kind of uh, kind of awkward to ask. Um, does the judges uh, can get something after the show of the bikini contest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's going to be G, G cash involved. It just all depends on. How many participants yeah. we have? So yeah. far, when we got six, if nobody shows up in that first hour, it's over. Okay. And the less people, the more GCash will be. Okay. 
okay. And it took me a lot of convincing with Sammy this morning. I said, Sammy, you're assuming that the judges are who they are. And I kept telling her, no, they're not. It comes to a shock to everybody, like, oh, yeah, the males, they'll always vote for them. But no. It's kind of funny that three of the judges are female and only one is male. <laughs> I did that on purpose so Sammy would get a fair shake where she wouldn't be judged for who she is and just judge her for doing the bikini competition. See what I mean? Yeah, I get it. And Can you sing another song real? for us? I really like your voice. Okay, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll do one more. Yeah. Hey, Rosalie, are you here? What would you like to hear? She's uh, watching while working. I don't think she heard me do typo negative. Well, this one anyway. Yeah, do it. Recordings okay, got just got better. Commercial air, I got to meet for a second. Hey, it's Dana. Okay. You ready? Are you ready? Can you hear me, Cheer? Yeah, yeah. Hold okay. on, hold on. We can hear we you. We can hear you. We can hear you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go now. Hopefully Rosalie can hear this. This is typo negative, by the way. She's in love with herself She likes the dark And on her milk white neck The devil's mark Now it's a hollow sea the moon is full Or will she trick or treat? I bet she will <laughs> A date at midnight with both of the two, yeah. Oh, baby, little monster ain't got nothing on you. But when I called her evil, she just played. Well, catch that spell on me, boob is crap.
some black, 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 black number, black number. speakers like mine that I got on, how well it sounds over my, I wish you could hear it, what I'm listening to. Yeah. Not, I'm, uh, right. I'm, uh, yeah. I might uh, do, uh, we, we can do a last song now um, after I, I sing, you do an end song. It's all right for you, Sean? Hello? Sean? Yeah, yeah, I'll do one more. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'll do my. Uh, okay, you you sing first, and then after that, I'll sing. Okay, you sing first. 
because it's almost three hours and uh, later my daughter will go down here for her class. Are you okay, uh, Leonard Lund? Yes, I am. Yeah. Thank mm. you for asking, but I'm fine. Yeah. Sorry, I don't speak too much here because. Uh, okay, I'll do this other typo negative song then. Yes. Because I do a whole catalog of them. Why isn't this working? I'd have to go with this here. All right, let me see if I get this working right. Okay. Okay, well, hold on. I gotta mute for just a second in case there's commercials. Okay, there's not. That's good. Here we go. You hit the buzz.
I'll sing uh, one song here. For... It took all for my background to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will sing uh, one song, guys. Uh, I'll try this one. Okay. Here we go. It's a Filipino song, but it's English. Walk down out and feeling so low. You took my hand, erased my mind. I was astray, you showed me the way. And now I finally found my home in you. I still recall the times I've been through Confused and I couldn't know what to do I almost gave up, but you gave me a hope You've made me strong as the days went on you made me live again I was lost in the dark With my lonely broken heart Then you came along You took me home And made me your own Always there to lend a helping hand When good friends were hard to find When things went wrong, you made them all right You made my days so bright you made me live again I was lost in the dark With my lonely broken heart Then you came along You took me home And made me your own Now look at me, 
Yes, I befriend me back on my feet again. I'm not afraid to face the world again. Cause you taught me how to be strong. You made me live again. You made me live again. Okay, I will do another last song, guys. Um, just to oh, thank sorry. yeah everyone here. Um, this is something like um, I wanted to sing long, long time ago. Here we go. It's called the gift. I uh, know your love. Sorry. All right, great. Thanks. It's not the flowers wrapped in fancy paper. It's not the rain I wear around my finger. It's nothing in all the world I need. Why never hear you side me here beside me so you could give me wings to fly catch me if I fall through the stars that form the sky and so I wish them all so I couldn't ask for more because in love is the great escape them all. In your arms, I found the strength beside me. But in your eyes, there's a light to guide me. I will be lost without you, and all of my heart will never want this come true. So you could give me wings to fly, catch me if I fall through the stars down from the sky, because I could wish them and all. Cause I couldn't ask for more Cause your love is the greatest gift them all You could offer me the sun, the moon And I would still believe You gave me everything Cause you gave your heart to me Single left shout out to everyone. But I couldn't ask for more. Cause your love is the greatest gift them all. You could give me wings to fly. Catch me if I fall. Let's rule the stars down from the sky. Cause I will wish them them all. But I couldn't ask for more. Cause your love is the greatest gift of all. Your love is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. Thank you very much, everyone. Who uh, hold on? Who uh, attended my uh, live stream? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and thank you very much, Lena Lund. 
end um i'm going to end up now my uh live stream because it's almost soon it turns out to be a four <laughs> anyway thank you thank you guys okay thank you sean sure okay bye everyone okay bye, bye.